Trust in intuitive inspiration. As mentioned in Tuesday's video, what we would want to ideally experience on the journey in relation to the activities, the projects, the initiatives in regards to our goals and vision is a deep stage of flow, which we called autotelic. When a person is in their autotelic way of being, actions and awareness become one. In communication, the words flow effortlessly. In skill cultivation, a person enjoys being there. They allow the subconscious mind to express. They have released from overthinking, emotional reactivity, convoluted behaviors, and they listen to and they trust themselves. If a person notices that they're having challenge maintaining this autotelic way of being, then perhaps it's beneficial for them to connect back to their inspiration. I've noticed this in different stages of my life. I repeatedly showed up and performed the activities, work on the projects, and I do this for an extended period of time. And then perhaps I start to feel like I forgot why I'm doing it. Then perhaps overthinking, emotional reactivity, convoluted behaviors start to present themselves. As I had mentioned all throughout the videos, it's important to keep our inspiration at a peak. This is an indication for me, if I have these experiences, to connect back to my inspiration from within so that I can link purposeful thought over to the various activities, the projects, and I feel it, thinking and feeling. I genuinely want to be there. I'm excited to be there. And I find that this is done by connecting back to my inspiration. Now, there is this body of work called the McClellan's Theory of Motivation, in which he speaks about three aspects. Let's reflect upon these. Number one, you've got achievement. This is an aspect of us that enjoys accomplishment of challenging goals. In relation to Tuesday's video, autotelic is a way of being where we enjoy the challenges, the projects, the activities for itself. Although it's linked to a goal, a vision, or definite chief aim, we are there and we genuinely want to be there and we are enjoying the experience. Also related to achievement could be working in solitude. I know that this is common for me. Most of my day, I'm working by myself on the various projects. And back in the days, I would find challenge doing this because I didn't connect back to the intrinsic motivation of finding joy, being by myself, working on the projects. Number two is affiliation. Some might be motivated to belong to a group. They're interested in collaboration. Now, as we go through this, it's important to reflect within yourself and say, what is inspirational or motivational for you? Perhaps it's more on the side of affiliation or achievement. For me, it's a combination. Then we have power. Interested in influencing change in our organizations, for example, with our clients, for those that we serve. Carving out also a path of distinction. Maybe you have a distinct way of doing things, a distinct philosophy to maybe how others are seeing reality. However, you find it's very effective. And so you want to maintain true to this distinct way of looking at reality, your own philosophy, 
And perhaps this might even tie into affiliation. As in, you want to connect this way of living, this philosophy, with others. So we can see the combination here. And an achievement would be to take this philosophy, write a book, or if you're on social media, put out some content to share this philosophy. And that's an achievement for you. The achievement would be to sit down and create 30 videos, for example, for the next 30 days and put them out there so that you can share this philosophy, this way of being, this distinct way of looking at reality, and also sharing it with others to perhaps create a community so we can see the combination there. Now, I'm going to tie this into the five levels of self-talk as articulated in What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. Powerful book, and I've done a number of discussions on the book. I'll put a link in the description to the recent discussion that I did this year on it. Because here's what we're looking to do. We're looking to connect our thoughts with purpose in relation to our goals and vision and allow creative, intuitive ideas, hunches, and inspiration to be stimulated and brought to the surface. And one of the ways that we can do this is connecting back to what inspires us. So bringing awareness on achievement, affiliation, and power. Perhaps one or the other or in combination. And the answer is depends. One would look within themselves and say, what's their ratio for this? And then actually perhaps do some of these things here that I do. Seven ways to stimulate the inspiration back. You could do one of these things or perhaps a variation of these things or all of them. So I find that by connecting back to my intuitive inspiration, I notice that it's easier for me to maintain this autotelic way of being, a deep degree of flow. And although there are many ways of doing this, here are some ways that have been very beneficial for me. Number one, change up the routine. So I have a morning routine and I have a certain schedule of how I go about my work day. However, every now and then I like to switch it up. I might work from another location. As mentioned in Tuesday's video, I learned how to snowboard over the last few years. And during those periods of time, I was actually living up north in Blue Mountains, Ontario. And as a result of being in a different location, as well as learning a new hobby or a skill, something that I enjoyed doing. And the result of this change, many benefits, but one of the benefits is I had a lot of inspiration, ideas that I was able to note down a lot of times I take notes on my phone and infuse into these videos, these discussions. Number two, go for a walk or hike in a new area. So I was actually there in the summertime as well. And there are great hiking locations. And also there was this one park where there was a whole bunch of soccer fields. And I used to enjoy running in the evening. Now, because I was living there for a period of time, I got to run in this area, which isn't an area that I normally run in for a period of time. And I noticed that I was getting creative ideas and inspiration. The same is to be said when I travel or I go on vacation or on the weekends. I like to vary up my walks, walk on different pathways, because I find that by switching it up, I get creative ideas, hunches, and inspiration. Now let's relate this over to achievement, affiliation, and power. Well, one of the things that happens is as a person is interacting with others and they're sharing their views, their philosophy, every now and then they want to connect back to their inner voice. They may start to notice that they are not thinking how they truly think. And so, Doing these things help us connect back to that path of distinction. And also, 
It allows us to, from the perspective of affiliation, bring new insights, wisdom, or as we relate to in the hero's journey, we bring the magic elixir, different ways of dealing with challenges, resistance, obstacles, etc. into our communication, our relationships with others. This helps the group. And that side of us that's interested in affiliation, collaboration, we bring new distinct insights and perspectives and life experiences, reference experiences to share. And this helps others tremendously. Also in achievement, as you work in solitude and you do some of these things that we're going to discuss further, again, you get ideas, perspectives, and different ways of doing perhaps your creative expression, your art, invention, innovation, and perhaps integrate some of the understandings as a result of the experiences and your internal relationship with the experience into your creative expression, into your art, into your conversation, into whatever it is that you are creating. Number three, engage in conversation with other creatives. Another one of my favorite things to do is to connect with others who are also in the space of entrepreneurship, invention, innovation, arts. And even though they express differently, whatever their art may be, we also find that there's commonality, there's similarity. And through having these dialogues, conversations, on what we're mutually interested in, which is our creative expression. Again, I'm able to stimulate thinking differently, nonlinear, unconventional, seeing reality from different perspectives, stepping outside of my paradigm, releasing in the earlier stages of what maybe for an extended period of time could lead to overly rigid or dogmatic ways of thinking. Number four, travel and visit new places. You get to experience different cultures. You get to meet people who see reality maybe even radically different, live different lifestyles, have different ways they go about doing some of the same things that we do, although they might do it differently. Number five, learn about someone inspirational. There was this one book that I read earlier in the journey when I was building my IT business. It's called Life Hacked by Alan Wong. And he was a very successful app developer. I'll put a link in the description to his ebook. I found his story to be very inspirational. His distinct stories, life experiences, and challenges that he was experiencing and how he overcame it was inspirational for me. As I would find these connections from doing these different things, and I continue to do these things, if I find that I'm forcing myself rather than allowing creative expression from that inspiration, the intuitive inspiration to flow, I do these things and I connect back ideas, inspirations from these experiences are linked with my purpose. And that connects me back to my distinct path. It allows me to share that information with others in a collaborative way. And it allows me to maintain that autotelic on the projects, the initiatives, rather than forcing myself to do these things because I'm operating from intuitive inspiration, which I find is complemented by doing these things. Number six, reconnect to your childhood interests. This is one of the reasons why I actually got back into snowboarding. When I was growing up, I was into board sports. And what I noticed is by doing some of these other things here, visiting new places, having conversations with people. Somehow it was stimulated to this idea to try snowboarding. As a matter of fact, the entrepreneurial path, which I went on in 2009, was stimulated by childhood interests. I remember I always wanted to have my own business. I would create these little side businesses and I would try things when I was a teenager. Same is to be said about hobbies and actually traveling and living in different countries which I've lived in a number of countries over the last 10 years. 
was also a childhood interest of mine. Number seven, teach something you know to another. So we have skills, we have hobbies, we have areas of interest. If you can get a group of people together or even meet up with a friend or someone you know and teach them how to do that, what you may end up finding is that it will stimulate certain creative ideas that may be related to your goals, your visions, your definite chief aim. I believe there's something inherent within us where we genuinely enjoy to share what we have learned. This is also related to the hero's journey. Again, watch that video. I'll put a link in the description. And it can also tie into affiliation here. There's something about learning a skill, overcoming a challenge, going down a very distinct pathway where perhaps at a certain point we find that it's extremely fulfilling to teach others. And what we also find very rewarding is having gone through perhaps a lot of frustration and challenges and adversity along the path to communicate and share with a person or a group of people. Again, we can relate this over to affiliation where what ends up happening is we shorten the amount of time, the span of time it takes for them to produce the success or it reduces a lot of the stress and frustration that they might have experienced on the journey as a result of your own reference experience and what you have learned on the journey. And what I find by doing all these things, as mentioned, you could do some of these things, all of these things, or perhaps some of these things inspire your own version of these things. As we do these things, we connect back to our intuitive inspiration. Now in the book, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself, he speaks about the five levels of self-talk. And when I'm by myself working on my projects and my activities, I notice a lighthearted inner conversation playing out with myself as I'm relating with my work, whatever it is that I'm doing. And intuitive ideas, inspirations, innovation, brought to the surface during my experience of working on whatever it is that I'm doing, which is more aligned with level five self-talk. So let's talk about these. Level one, self-talk represents everything from our simplest misgivings to worst fears we have about ourselves. What we want to encourage more so in our creative endeavors, when we are with ourselves, working on our projects and activities, which is automatic from the perspective of autotelic, is level four and level five here. And what we notice is by doing these things, this becomes automatic. So by actually doing these things or something similar, we actually connect back to the motivating factors, whatever the ratio is for us in regards to power, affiliation, achievement. We encourage new ways of thinking intuitive ideas, perspectives. And as James Allen says, we link our thought with purpose for intelligent accomplishment. So let's go through these levels here. Level one, self-talk represents everything from our simplest misgivings to the worst fears we have about ourselves. Level two, self-talk is categorized by words such as I need to, I ought to, or I should. Level three, self-talk is the first level of self-talk that works for you. This is where a person decides. Perhaps they say, I'm going to stop doing something. I'm going to change my life around. Level four is self-talk categorized by the words, I am. I am organized and in control of my life, for example. And so the intuitive self-talk is level five. As he says, this level of self-talk has been spoken for thousands of years. It is inspired by the ancients. It is the self-talk of oneness with spirit. So this is where we get our ideas, hunches, and inspiration for creativity, artistic expression, invention, and innovation. Similar to what we spoke of in regards to the video that I did last week when I mentioned Nikola Tesla going into his imagination and bringing forth the invention actually constructing it in his imagination with vivid detail. I'll put a link in the description to that video. And as mentioned, 
I did a recent discussion on what to say when you talk to yourself. We discussed these levels in detail. So in summary, let's go back to the quote here from James Allen. He says, until thought is linked with purpose, there is no intelligent accomplishment. With the majority, the bark of thought is allowed to drift upon the ocean of life. Aimlessness is a vice, and such drifting must not continue for him who would steer clear of catastrophe and destruction. We actually want to receive within intuitive ideas, hunches, and inspiration, thoughts, the new thoughts within, and connect them over to our goals, our vision, in a lighthearted way, which happens when we are autotelic. And we can get back into that autotelic way of being by recognizing the combination here, achievement, affiliation, and power. And in regards to those characteristics, having those thoughts stimulated by perhaps changing up our routine, going for a walk, a hike, engaging in conversation with other creatives, travel, visiting new places, learning about someone inspirational, connecting back to our childhood interests, and even teaching, mentoring, leading others. As we do this, we notice that it's easier to maintain that peak inspiration. Because we have recalibrated ourselves and we automatically trust in the intuitive inspiration from within. And as a result, we automatically, this happens automatically, link thought with purpose. And we maintain that lighthearted heart and mind relationship on the journey to realizing our goals and our visions in regards to our tasks, projects, and activities from the perspective of autotelic, where actions and awareness are one. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I recognize my ability to automatically link thought with intelligent accomplishment by stimulating creativity and intuitive inspiration from the perspective of my vision realized. As a result, inspiration is kept at a peak by allowing myself to think, feel, and do the things that I'm inspired to do from within to deepen my relationship with intuition and inspiration. From this perspective, I'm able to carve out my distinct path to the destination. This allows me to maintain a heart and mind coherence in relationship with my projects, creative expressions, and activities. People show up ready to receive the magic elixirs that I discover on my pathway through this authentic way of being. This further allows me to maintain lighthearted trust, faith, and conviction expressed as self-confidence-based creative expression, communication, and authentic way of being on the journey to realizing my vision. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.